welcome to course on advanced geotechnical engineering we are discussing about module 5 uh, that is slope stability analysis so this is the lecture number 3 on stability of slopes uh, in this lecture or in this lecture 3 we are going to discuss about the slope stability analysis methods comparison of different slope stability analysis methods and some examples for evaluating at factor of safety. So in the previous lecture we introduced ourselves to different slope stability analysis methods and we said that there are methods like ordinary method of slices and it's followed by Bishop's method of slices and then there is a Morganston Price method and John Boos method. So coming to the, uh, or the ordinary method of slices let us uh, recollect once again in this method the potential surface is assumed to be circular in nature with uh, center at uh, O and uh, having a radius R and the soil mass which is within the uh, circular arc zone from the slope surface and the crest zone it is divided into vertical planes into series of slices of width b preferentially preferably these uh, slices have to be of identical width the base of each slice is assumed to be straight line for convenience purposes the factor of safety is defined as the ratio of the available shear strength tau f to the shear strength tau m which is which must be mobilized to maintain a condition of limiting equilibrium so the factor of safety in this method is defined as the ratio of the available shear strength tau f to the shear strength tau m which must be mobilized to maintain a condition of limiting equilibrium so in this uh, uh, slide on the right bottom corner a free body diagram of a, a typical slice is shown the weight of that particular slice is assumed to be at the center of the slice and the normal reaction that n dash and the s is the tangential force which is actually shown in a typical slice. The ordinary method of slices satisfies the moment equilibrium for circular surface but neglects both inter slice forces that is normal as well as shear forces which are actually there between the slices they are assumed to be 0 that means that the forces which are actually acting here and here and along this uh, surface they are actually assumed to be neglected. So the advantage of this method is its simplicity in solving the factor of safety since the equation does not require any iteration process. So in summary the ordinary method of slices satisfies the moment equilibrium condition and neglects interslice normal and the shear forces and gives the most conservative factor of safety and is useful for demonstrations or preliminary estimations. So the detailed explanation of this method is shown here in this a cross section of a slope which is ADC uh, which is shown and with the O at the center. Uh, center of the rotation and R is the radius and the surface ABC is assumed to be one of the failure surfaces and uh, if a typical slice of width B if it is assumed that the soil mass within ABCD is divided into some equal number of slices having width B in horizontal direction and if it is considered the, the true free body diagram which is actually shown free body of the slice i uh, which is uh, if this is the slice i the free body diagram is actually shown here wherein e1 and e2 are the normal forces interslice normal forces x1 and x2 are the interslice tangential forces and this is the normal reaction which is actually acting to in the, in the it gets oriented toward the center of rotation and this is the tangential uh, uh, force which is actually acting opposite the movement of the soil. So that is actually basically the resistance offered by the soil. Further simplifying on this 
uh, we can actually get now the factor of safety we have defined already and the total weight of the slice we can give it as gamma into uh, h the h is the height at the center of the slice uh, into uh, b uh, that is the width of the slice into one one unit that is the because it is a two dimensional analysis we are doing parameter analysis then total normal force n is equal to sigma into l and uh, which includes n dash is equal to sigma dash into l and u is equal to uh, u into l uh, depending upon the water table location uh, we can actually calculate what is the u uh, per water pressure uh, into uh, the length of that particular uh, straight line portion of the slice we can actually get u and multiplying by effective stress into l we get n dash. So u is the pore water pressure at the center of the base of, uh, of the slice and l is the length of the base. The shear force on the base can be given as tau m is uh, the shear strength which must be mobilized to keep the uh, slope in equilibrium or uh, you know ensure adequate factor of safety tau m into l and the total normal forces on slides E1 and E2 they are even in E2 shear forces are x1 and x2. Now further considering the moment about O the sum of the moments of the shear forces T on the failure or arc AC must be equal to moment of the weight of the soil mass ABCD. So if we can actually take the moments like sigma T into R is equal to sigma WR sin alpha. So here what we have done is that we have taken the weight component into R the radius R is the lever R. Now by using T is equal to tau m into L by writing tau m is equal to tau, tau f by factor of safety into L and substituting in uh, for sigma T R we can write tau f by factor of safety into L is equal to sigma W sin alpha. So by bringing the factor of safety term on the left hand side we can write factor of safety is equal to sigma tau f into L divided by uh, sigma w sin alpha. So uh, further this can be worked out like this uh, the tau f we can actually write it as c dash plus sigma dash tan phi dash into L by sigma, sigma of w sin alpha. So for an analysis in terms of effective stress we can write factor of safety is equal to sigma summation c dash plus sigma dash tan phi into L divided by uh, sigma of w sin alpha and this can be further simplified uh, by writing sigma dash L is equal to n dash we can write factor of safety is equal to c dash into L A where L A is the uh, if you if you look into that now the summation which is removed for the cohesion term because L1, L2, L3, L4 and the summation of that is L A. So c dash L A plus tan phi dash into sigma dash n phi uh, n dash. So sigma into n dash divided by w sin alpha within summation that is the equation 1 is exact but approximations are actually introduced in terms of the forces n dash. So this actually this expression gives the factor of safety uh, in this uh, lecture we are also going to solve some typical problems uh, for arriving at uh, the factor of safety of a typical slope by using uh, manual calculation methods or by also by using uh, uh, some software packages. The further the failures or a Swedish uh, solution uh, it is assumed that for each slice the resultant of the interslice forces is 0. In the, so in the Swedish method or a failures method what is assumed that the, for each slice the resultant of the interslice forces is 0. In the uh, ordinary method of slices the interslice forces have been neglected but in the failures method uh, it is more or less same as uh, in uh, ordinary method of slices but uh, only difference is that uh, for each slice the resultant of the interslice forces is assumed to be 0. So the solution involves resolving the forces on each slice normal to the base so n dash is equal to w cos alpha minus u l because u l is nothing but the pore water pressure acting on a particular length of the slice that is uh, l. So rewriting uh, the equation 1 we can write c dash l a plus tan phi dash sigma that n dash we write it as now w cos alpha minus u l divided by uh, uh, sigma w sin alpha. So this is the revised expression for computing factor of safety uh, by using the 
Fellius or Swedish method of slices. Uh, the explanation for the uh, procedure for calculating factor of safety by using Fellnius or Swedish method of slices is given here. Uh, let us consider that a slope which is actually having a cross section A, D, C uh, which is shown here uh, and uh, the slope of A, D which is the question because if uh, you know the factor of adequate factor of safety is ensured then there is a possibility that uh, if the material is actually having adequate uh, characteristics adequate strength characteristics the slope of ad line can be maintained steeper if the material is not having adequate characteristics and there is a need for you know adopting the flat inclinations for the for the slopes generally the slopes which are normally adopted for highway embankments or railway embankments they range from one vertical 1.5 horizontal to one vertical two horizontal uh, in some urban areas there is a need for uh, uh, you know steepening of the slopes in such situations uh, one uh, need to adopt some strengthening options for the slopes so that the areas can be maintained uh, steeper that means that uh, when whenever there is an uh, you know land acquisition problems or land availability problems the slope of ad can almost be maintained uh, vertical and uh, in order to make it to stand an appropriate strengthening solution need to be designed. So, in this module we are going to discuss about these options for these things. Now, let us assume that this particular example here the procedure we divide this slices into the, the entire soil mass A, C, D within the assumed failure surface. The failure surface which is a circular arc having R radius and is assumed to be divided into let us say 7 number of slices. So, uh, this is the uh, one slice which is a portion of the triangle and this is uh, looking like a trapezium and this is having a, a certain dimensions here and uh, so there are uh, different uh, slices and this is the center of rotation. So, uh, first what we want to do is that you calculate what is the area and uh, uh, into uh, uh, L which actually gives the volume into uh, gamma gives the weight of that slice 1 that means that one need to calculate w1 w2 w3 w4 w5 w6 w7 and all these respective weights for each these slices will be acting in the center of the slice and uh, uh, let us assume that this slice each slice having a width of small b in horizontal direction then they assume that this slice is actually acting the the weight is actually acting at the center so if uh, this is the uh, width b b by 2 here b by 2 here and then uh, this is the line joining. So, after once the weight is actually indicated here uh, draw a line from uh, to the center of the slice here here and here where the weight is passing and uh, with vertical uh, this angle need to be recorded from graphically alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 2 alpha 3 alpha 4 alpha 5 alpha 6 which is actually shown. So, as we traverse from 1 to 7 you can see that the the angle changes uh, from positive to negative. So, the components of uh, weights w1, w2, w3 need to be find out like w cos alpha and w sin alpha can be determined uh, from the alpha once it is obtained from graphically then uh, uh, the components can be obtained. For an analysis in terms of total stress the parameters Cu and phi u are used basically what we said is that that is for short term stability calculations and the value of the u will be 0 in that case factor of safety is equal to Cu into La plus tan phi u into sigma w cos alpha that means that uh, let us uh, assume that we have got now 7 slices now. So, w1 cos alpha 1 w2 cos alpha 2 w3 cos alpha 3 the summation up to w7 cos alpha 7 divided by w1 sin alpha 1 w2 sin alpha 2 up to w7 sin alpha 7. So, once you, uh, we have this and then Cu into La suppose it is also possible that we can also take like Cu into L1 Cu into L2 then the it is nothing but L1 is nothing but the uh, for a slice 1 what is this particular length it is approximated as a straight line. So, this uh, graphically this length can be obtained and then it can be used for a once it is a diagram is drawn to a scale it can be obtained. So, let us assume that for phi u is equal to 0 case. So, that is something like 
Cu La divided by sin alpha. That means that if you are having a slope with uh, undrained conditions uh, where saturated clay slope, then the factor of safety can be obtained as Cu into La divided by W sin alpha. Now, uh, Bishop's simplified method of slices. Uh, in this uh, so a solution, it is assumed that the resultant force on the sides of the slices are horizontal and uh, x1 minus x2 is equal to 0. So, for equilibrium, the shear force on the base of any slice is given as T is equal to 1 by factor of safety into C dash into L plus N dash tan phi dash. So, resolving the forces in the vertical direction, we can get W is equal to N dash cos alpha plus UL cos alpha plus C dash L sin alpha by factor of safety N dash tan phi dash by factor of safety into sin alpha. After some rearrangement of the terms and using L is equal to B secant alpha, we will get a factor of safety term as factor of safety is equal to 1 by summation of W sin alpha into summation within brackets, again brackets with C dash B plus W minus UB tan phi dash bracket close into secant alpha uh, divided by 1 plus tan alpha tan phi dash divided by factor of safety uh, bracket close. So, this uh, expression actually has the factor of safety in both left hand side and right hand side. So, this involves a, an iteration procedure. Initially, the factor of safety is assumed to be uh, uh, computed from the Swedish method of slices and then uh, with that iteration value. Uh, after setting uh, number of iterations, one can calculate what is the factor of safety of a uh, slope by Bishop's method of slopes, slopes, Bishop's simplified method of slopes and this is one of the versatile method uh, for uh, assessing the factor of safety of the slopes. So, Bishop uh, 1955 uh, in his uh, paper, uh, he also showed that non-zero values of the resultant forces x1 minus x2 could be introduced into analysis by refinement has only a marginal effect on the factor of safety. And so, Bishop 1955 stated that how non-zero values of the resultant forces x1 minus x2 could be introduced into the analysis, but refinement has only have a marginal effect on the factor of safety. So, in the Bishop simplified method, the pore water pressure can be related to the total fill pressure at any point by means of dimensionless, dimensionless pore pressure ratio which is R u is equal to u by gamma h. Suppose if the R u value is equal to 0, that means the, the slope is uh, uh, you can say that uh, partially saturated when uh, uh, is almost dry and uh, R u is equal to uh, you know 0.5 that indicates that uh, the slope is completely saturated. For any, for any intermediate value between uh, 0 to u by gamma h, it is partially saturated and uh, r u is equal to 0, it indicates that the slope is uh, dry. For any slope r u is equal to u by w by b and by rewriting these terms, we can write for any slice r u is equal to u by w by b. By rewriting, we can write factor of safety expression uh, by 1 by uh, summation of w sin alpha, summation into c dash b plus w into 1 minus r u tan phi dash uh, secant alpha. Uh, 1 plus tan alpha tan phi dash by factor of safety. When r u is equal to 0, then you know we have w tan phi dash into secant alpha plus 1 plus tan alpha tan phi dash by factor of safety. So, here the, summa the summary in summary, uh, Bishop simplified method considers the interslice normal forces uh, that is uh, x1 and x2 are uh, the tangential forces here, the tangential forces and even in E2 are the normal forces. So, uh, Bishop simplified method considers the interslice normal forces, but neglects the interslice shear forces. So, kindly note here uh, Bishop simplified method consider, considers the interslice normal forces, but neglects the interslice shear forces. It further satisfies the vertical force equilibrium to determine the effective base normal force n dash. So, it satisfies moment equilibrium for factor of safety. So, in summary, Bishop simplified method satisfies moment equilibrium for factor of safety, satisfies vertical force equilibrium for n for determining n or n dash, considers interslice normal force, interslice normal forces are considered and more commonly used in practice and applies mostly for 
circular shear face surfaces. That means that wherever there is a homogeneous uh, uh, soil which is used let us say for embankment construction or uh, for highway embankment or railway embankment construction when the material is actually obtained from identical borrow pit area then we can say that the possible uh, failure surface can be circular in nature. Then coming to the John Booth uh, simplified method, John Booth simplified method is based on a comp uh, composite slip surface that means basically uh, non-circular in nature and factor of safety is determined by horizontal force equilibrium. So as in uh, Bishop's uh, simplified method, method considers interstellar normal forces but neglects the shear forces. So here, uh, here also in this uh, free body diagram of this slice which is shown for John Booth simplified method. Uh, the tangential forces x1, x2 or the, the forces which are actually acting in this uh, direction they are considered to be neglected and uh, they in John Booth method also like in Bishop simplified method it considers the E1 and E2 that is these are the norm, interstellar normal forces and uh, it satisfies both force equilibrium that is vertical force equilibrium as well as horizontal force equilibrium but it does not satisfy the moment, equi moment equilibrium and considers interstellar normal forces and it is, comp it is commonly used for determining factor of safety for composite shear surfaces, composite shear surfaces it is actually used. Then coming to the another method for determining the uh, factor of safety that is the Morgenstern price method. Uh, this satisfies both force and moment equilibrium and also assumes that uh, the interstellar function was assumed. So here uh, the interstellar forces is assumed in the form of a function and considers both interstellar forces here uh, you can see in this uh, free body diagram of this slice which is actually shown here where E1 and E2 and T1 and T2 are forces they both are considered and they both are related uh, in the form of a function fx and considers both the interstellar forces and uh, they, they are considered assumed as a interstellar force function uh, wx and allows selection of the interstellar force function and computes the factor of safety for both force and moment equilibrium. So it computes the factor of safety for both force and moment equilibrium. Uh, the Spencer's method, uh, this is same as the Morgenstern and Price method, uh, the assumption made for interstellar forces, uh, but a constant inclination is assumed for interstellar forces and the factor of safety is computed for both equilibriums. That is it considers again the Spencer's method uh, very similar to Morgenstern price method. It considers both in, uh, interstellar forces, assumes a constant interstellar force function and satisfies both moment and force equilibrium uh, conditions and computes factor safety for force and moment equilibrium condition, uh, uh, computes the factor safety for force and moment equilibrium. And uh, the free body, di free body diagram of the uh, typical slice in Spencer's method is shown here, weight is actually acting here, this is the movement of the slope. So opposing that this is the soil uh, resistance which is actually offered from the mobilized uh, shear strength, n dash is the normal reaction and E1 and E2 are the normal forces from the inter slice uh, on a particular slice and T1 and T2 are the shear forces. So this is uh, after the Spencer's method is after Sp uh, Spencer 1967. So let us after having discussed about the uh, number of uh, methods, let us try to solve some typical problems uh, by using uh, manual calculations as well as by using uh, some uh, computer uh, uh, aided uh, methods. So let us consider in the example 1, a 45 degrees slope is excavated to a depth of 8 meter in a deep layer of saturated clay of unit width, uh, unit uh, weight 19 kilo Newton per meter cube. The relevant shear strength parameters are given as uh, Cu undrained cohesion as 65 kilo Newton per meter square and phi u is equal to 0. So determine the factor of safety for the trail failure surface specified in the figure in the next uh, uh, slide and the cross sectional area uh, ABCD which is within the uh, in the failure within the uh, zone from the top surface of the slope uh, to the failure surface is 70 meter square. So a 45 degree slope is excavated to a depth of 8 meter in a deep layer of saturated clay of unit weight 19 kilo Newton per meter cube. 
the relevant shear strength parameters are C u is equal to 65 kilo Pascals and phi u is equal to 0. So, we need to determine the factor of safety for the specified uh, failure surface. There can be number of uh, trail failure surfaces, but uh, uh, we are actually calculating for a, a typical trail failure surface. So, the cross section is actually shown here, wherein uh, we see that uh, A, B, C is the assumed uh, trail failure surface and A, D is the slope which is inclined at 45 degrees with the horizontal and uh, D, C is the crest width and uh, the radius uh, is uh, 12.1 meters and uh, the horizontal distance O D is 4.5 meters and assume that W is actually acting uh, right below the D vertically down and uh, the area of A, B, C, D portion is 70 square meters into 1 meter is the volume which is involved in the, uh, uh, in the active zone. So, what we call uh, that weight is nothing but 70 cubic meters into gamma if the soil is assumed to be uniform here in this case then we get the weight. Then the height of the slope is 8 meters and uh, the, the rotation which is actually taking place at a height of uh, say 11.5 meters uh, from the uh, toe level which is actually at point A. So, the solution is like this finding out the weight of the soil mass which is nothing but 17 to 1 into 19 that is the unit weight. So, uh, we get uh, if it is uh, if uh, if it is not considered as into 1 is not multiplied then we calculate weight per meter length. Uh, the centroid of ABCD is uh, 4.5 meter from O and angle which is subtended uh, between uh, uh, between uh, A O and uh, O C is 89.5 degrees. So, hence uh, the radius uh, is actually about 12.1 meters the arc length we can actually calculate uh, based on once we know the angle A O C we can actually calculate what is the arc length A B C and that is working out to be 18.9 meters. So, the factor of safety uh, can be given by uh, factor of safety is equal to C u L a into r. So, C u L a is nothing but the uh, you know the resting uh, force into r, r is nothing but the uh, the uh, lever arm for uh, from the distance from the center of rotation to the the uh, force along the uh, arc surface and w is nothing but the uh, weight of soil mass into the horizontal distance d. So, W D forms as a driving moment and C U L A R is the resting moment. So, computation of the factor of safety it gives 2.548 and it is to be noted that uh, the factor of safety whatever we have computed for the trail failure surface need not be that it is a it gives the minimum factor of safety. Uh, one need to get the what is the potential failure surface and what is the minimum factor of safety we can actually can be obtained. So, the minimum factor of safety can be obtained uh, for the similar problem by using Taylor's stability charts also. So, let us look into that how that uh, Taylor's stability chart can be used to get uh, a minimum factor of safety. So, here the minimum factor of safety can be estimated by using uh, factor of safety is equal to C u by n s into gamma h where n s is nothing but the Taylor's stability number. So, using uh, Taylor's uh, stability chart uh, n s versus slope inclination. So, we tell us stability chart which we have discussed in the previous lectures wherein we actually have seen that for beta is equal to 45 degrees uh, the value of the assuming that d is large uh, the value of the n s is 0 0.18. So, uh, by substituting uh, these values factor of safety is equal to C u which is 65 divided by n s which is 0 0.18 into 19 into 8 we get the factor of safety 2.37. Now, if it is noted that the this particular uh, estimation is assumed to give the factor of safety the uh, close to the minimum factor of safety or it is a minimum factor of safety. So, how the value of the uh, n s is obtained from 0.18 can be obtained from the Taylor's chart wherein we have the uh, slope inclination on the x axis stability number on the y axis and uh, for slope 45 degrees uh, where, whereas here we have 45 degrees and we are actually we have assumed that the extent of the d below the uh, below the toe level is assumed to be large 
if the d is shallow then we are actually having here only but as we assume that the extent of the d uh, much farther below then d is equal to infinity we get uh, table stability number as 0 0.181 it is considered as 0 0.18 so based on that the factor of safety minimum factor of safety is obtained and wherein uh, we can actually calculate what is the uh, the factor of safety of a we, we calculated the factor of safety of a given slope. So, in this example uh, we try to determine by using the phi is equal to 0 method and we also use the Taylor's chart uh, to, get, to get the minimum factor of safety for a potential failure surface. Now, let us consider another example too uh, wherein using the Fellnius method of slices determine the factor of safety in terms of effective stress of the slope shown in the figure for the given failure surface using peak strength parameters c dash is equal to 10 kilo Pascals and phi dash is equal to 29 degrees. <coughs> so, the unit weight of the soil above and below the water table is given as 20 kilo Newton per meter cube. So, in this method by using the Fellnius method of slices the factor of safety is determined in terms of effective need to be determined in, the in terms of effective stress. So, this is after Craig 2004. So, the cross section is uh, given here and uh, if it is noted here uh, the, the potential the given surface is uh, shown here the given surface is shown here and uh, these are the normal reactions which are actually passing through that and these are the tangential forces and these are the weights this force this force triangle what you are seeing and these are the normal reactions these are the shear forces which are acting mobilized by the soil and this is the weight of the slice. And uh, the slope inclination is 1 vertical 1.5 horizontal. So, what we are interested is that what is the factor of safety of slope for a given uh, slope inclination which is here. Generally for factor of safety is equal to 1 means we say that is on the edge of failure and for factor of safety is equal to 1.5 for some slopes if it is designed then it is said as stable and here the r is equal to 9.5 meters and the vertical distance is about 9.15 meters. Here one approximation in, in Fellnius method is that we calculate the u value with reference to this vertical height, but in reality when the water table is actually varying inclined like this it is uh, uh, you know it is not this height in, in, in principle one need to consider this particular height. That means that uh, if you consider this uh, reduced distance uh, then z effective is uh, this height. So, uh, uh, but uh, in the Fellnius method we estimate the factor of safety at the center of this slice wherever the uh, water table if the water table surface is actually here then we take that this entire area in this this particular height we calculate what is the uh, pore water pressure and multiplied by this uh, length of this we get the ul but in reality it is uh, uh, this particular height so by uh, determining uh, with this jw uh, we end up on the conservative side so it is actually safe for a slope which is being uh, design. So, that is uh, need to be uh, you know uh, uh, re, uh, understand uh, while using the Fellnius method or Swedish method of slices. So, the computation uh, works out like this uh, after Craig 2004 wherein uh, we divided into 8 number of slices and uh, we determined uh, weights of these slices uh, and uh, uh, which are uh, obtained uh, as uh, it can be here it is shown in terms of h cos alpha and h sin alpha or we can actually adopt a simplified procedure like slice number and weight computations and alpha that is from the graph obtained graphically then calculating w cos alpha w sin alpha and also by noting down the let h is the let us say height of the slice in the center. But if you consider let us say that 3 fourth of the height is say water table is there then that z w into gamma will get the pore water pressure and then uh, graphically if you measure what is the length then you get that u into l as the pore water pressure that is kilo Newton uh, pore water force you can say uh, per, per, per meter length. 
So, uh, by using this expression factor of safety in terms of effective stress, we can calculate C dash L A plus tan phi dash into uh, sigma w, dash, w cos alpha minus U L by W sin alpha. So, the computation after simplification you get the factor of safety as 1.42. So, this indicates that the slope which is uh, one vertical uh, one and a half horizontal is having a factor of safety of 1.42. If one needs a factor of safety more than 1.5, then it indicates that the slope needs to be flattened. That means that one has to go for one vertical two horizontal from constructability point of view. Then this slope is tends to be ensure the higher value of factor safety. So this is again another example of Fellner's method of slices. In this particular uh, slice what is actually shown uh, in this particular uh, slide uh, what is shown is that the, sl the slope is actually divided into uh, portion within the failure surface is divided into seven number of slices but uh, there is uh, a tension crack of certain uh, uh, depth so one need to estimate uh, in uh, the value of the l is uh, suppose if this is the entire l and what we need to estimate is that this portion only in the participation of the tension because there exists a gap and where uh, because of the virtue of the tension crack we cannot actually estimate what is the uh, we cannot uh, consider in the form of a resistance. So here uh, the center of rotation is assumed to be at height of 7 meters and the slope is actually having certain inclination and uh, one can obtain like here uh, height of the slope is 5 meters and the horizontal distance is 8 meters. So, the it has actually has got inclination and the soil it is not necessarily that we get homogeneous soils we can also get the layered soils. So, in such situation where the portion above this portion above this is having is having properties of uh, C is equal to C dash is equal to 15 kilonewton per meter square, phi dash is equal to 20 degrees, and this can be a base soil where C dash is equal to 8 kilopascals and phi dash is equal to 25 degrees, gamma is equal to 18.5 kilonewton per meter cube, and uh, there can be also a situation of water table, but uh, in this example, no water table is given. Uh, so, here one need to uh, consider like here when we are considering the soil properties which are required to be uh, in this portion slide 6 and 7 we need to consider uh, the soil properties for the shear strength uh, resistance of these properties. But when you are considering here uh, particularly for uh, slice 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 we need to consider these properties. But uh, for the weight computation let us say for this particular weight computation we need to consider for this portion of the trapezium the unit weight of 18.5. If this in this case unit weight is same, but if this unit weight is say 19 kilonewton per meter cube, we need to take the uh, gamma 1 and gamma 2 and calculate the actual entire weight of the composite weight of the, the slice. So, uh, by performing the similar exercise like uh, uh, identifying the normal reactions and uh, calculating the weights and uh, obtaining graphically. So, in this case, you can see here alpha is equal to 0 and then alpha value changing to negative because they are actually coming towards the left side of uh, left side of uh, uh, you know moment of rotation. So, the solution for uh, this example 3 uh, which is actually given as uh, uh, Fellner's method of slices and uh, wherein uh, uh, we get the weight computation like W uh, the depending upon the area uh, we can actually get the unit weights uh, by taking the unit weights into consideration we get the uh, individual weights of all the slices. In this case there are seven number of slices and uh, C dash uh, the resistance which are actually considered and tan phi dash you can see here uh, up to uh, fifth slice these uh, properties were considered and here sixth and seven the subsoil properties are considered and the L which is actually obtained from the, uh, from the uh, uh, graphically and then N is equal to W cos alpha T is equal to W sin alpha these are computed from weight by knowing the angle alpha. Then one can calculate C dash into L and U L and for getting the U L measure the height of the height of let us assume that height is say you know is the central height of the slice in the middle 
uh, and uh, if water table is here in this case water table is also considered wherein we can actually calculate uh, uh, water table uh, height. So, with that you can calculate what is ZW, ZW into gamma W into that L we get the UL and N minus UL we get the uh, you know the force which is required to consider by multiplying this uh, N minus UL into tan phi dash we get N minus UL tan phi dash. The summation of this is 267.5 and the summation of C dash L is uh, 158, summation of the T is uh, 239.4. So, the factor safety expression for uh, uh, by using uh, Felnius method of slices is C dash L the summation of this plus uh, this divided by this is the driving moment. So, for this uh, by using this uh, condition with uh, for the type of uh, slope what we considered for the potential failure surface what is as well assumed then factor of safety is obtained as 1.78 as it is more than uh, 1.5 that for the type of uh, slope configuration which is considered the slope is said to be stable. Now in this uh, example uh, this uh, example uh, basically it is an example 4 the uh, this is the using the Bishop's method of slices uh, we need to determine the factor of safety in terms of effective stress for the slope detailed in the figure which we are going to see in the next pay next slide. The value of the RU which is actually the ratio of U by gamma H is given as 0.2 and the unit weight of the soil is 20 kilo per meter cube and the shear strength parameters are C is equal to 0 kilo Newton per meter square and phi is equal, phi dash is equal to 33 degrees. So, uh, this is the slope cross section which is shown and uh, this is the center of rotation and uh, the factor of safety is one vertical the uh, slope inclination is one vertical two horizontal and uh, vertical height is 7.5 if 17.5 means this this horizontal distance will be around 35 me 35 meters and uh, this is the uh, failure surface is assumed the failure surface is assumed to and uh, entry point is here and exit point is at the toe and this height is 48 meters now let us see how this can be solved by using uh, uh, Bishop's method of uh, slices. The expression is given here and uh, which we have discussed in this uh, lecture itself and uh, we divided like any other method we divide the uh, into the equal number of equal width of slices. So, these are shown here and uh, the phi dash is equal to 33 degrees and gamma R u is equal to 0 0.2 which is considered. So, estimate the weight of the slice. So, gamma b into h and uh, in terms of h if you look into it, it is 100 h kilo per meter meter and uh, 1 minus r u into tan phi dash is estimated as 0 0.52 and uh, here uh, as it has been told uh, because the factor of safety term which is actually there in uh, left hand side as well as right hand side you try with the initial value which is say 1.1 so tan phi dash by factor of safety is equal to tan 33 by 1.1 which is uh, 0.59 so, uh, the solution for the example uh, 4 uh, works out to be slice number which is 8 number of slices and uh, uh, the heights at the center of these slices are given here and uh, weights which are actually given uh, in terms of gamma b h given like this. Similarly, we uh, calculate what is alpha and then compute w sin alpha and then uh, compute w into 1 minus r u tan phi dash. So, with that we can actually get this particular term and then compute secant alpha divided by 1 plus tan alpha plus tan alpha into tan phi dash by factor of safety and the product which is uh, uh, of these two uh, is uh, given as this column and this column product is given as uh, here and the summation is 1271. So, this divided by this particular w sin alpha is uh, 1185 because in the previous slide if you look into this we have got we are actually estimating this and this uh, in one column we estimated this this particular term and in another column we estimated this term and uh, so if you look into this here uh, the product is uh, this particular term the product of this column and this column is yielding the summation as 1271 divided by this uh, summation of w sin alpha is yielding as 11.1185 so, with that the factor of safety is computed as 1.07. So, the trail value which we assumed is 1.1. So, the therefore, the take the factor of safety is 1.07 or 0.8. So, uh, this indicates that the slope is the for the type of uh, soil parameters which are actually considered the slope configuration is just stable in the sense that 
uh, any any uh, virtuality of uh, for the you know fluctuations in the uh, R u there can be slope can actually uh, increase of R u there can be possibility that slope will undergo failure. So, let us now uh, after having discussed about the uh, you know some examples for manual methods uh, now let us uh, try to look into the uh, comparison of the slope stability analysis uh, methods and uh, in this particular slide uh, a typical uh, slope which is actually shown how you know a failure surface is uh, located. So, there are uh, uh, you know different options and one option is that you consider a grid of centers it is uh, assumed that uh, it is a perpendicular bisector of this one uh, you know uh, the, the grid of centers. So, this horizontal distance and vertical distances can be uh, specified as 0.5 meter by 0.5 meter or it can range from uh, up to 5 meter by 5 meter and more the grid of centers the more is the accuracy and also uh, one can specify in the uh, uh, here what is the extension of minimum uh, radius and maximum radius and where uh, the circle or slip surface uh, can uh, proceed. So, based on that uh, we can actually calculate the circular failure surfaces. Generally what is done is that innumerable number of uh, failure surfaces are tried the one which actually gives. So, in this uh, we can actually get the contours where factor of safety is say 1.5 or 1.3 wherever the one the center which gives the least factor of safety that is actually centered uh, calculated or regarded as the critical factor of safety. Uh, in this case uh, you know uh, the center of the circle and here the with the entry and exit options uh, for using for searching. Uh, uh, so, different methods are there for searching the critical factor of safety in some uh, software packages a rhombus grid is actually used in that uh, uh, the minimum factor minimum radius and maximum radius is specified and with that it searches for the uh, uh, by trying number of uh, slip surfaces it tries to give the uh, the center which gives the or the slip surface which gives the uh, least factor of safety. So, a typical problem which is uh, given in Lambie and Whitman uh, 1969 was considered this is an embankment which is retaining a water uh, on the uh, on the rear side that is actually here and uh, the bund is constructed with a unit weight of uh, 19.64 kilon per meter cube cohesion is 4.31 kilo Pascals and friction angle is 32 degrees and there is a uh, drain here which is provided and this is the impermeable strata and the thickness of this is considered as 10 meters and this is the particular slope inclination which is actually shown here. So, this is the schematic uh, diagram of the slope cross section. So, what has been done is that uh, different methods were actually adopted and then try to compare the factor of safety. So, here uh, firstly the ordinary method of uh, slices was used uh, in this uh, uh, the geo slope 2012 version, version was used wherein uh, uh, first the seepage analysis was carried out and uh, by using the seepw module and uh, wherein the periodic surface is obtained because there is a drain here and uh, this being the uh, equipotential line. So, this is the flow line wherein you can see that uh, it actually meets at orthogonal orthogonal to the uh, equipotential line here and this portion is the uh, uh, periodic surface and uh, it is uh, considered here that this portion is the uh, one of the failure surface which actually shown here for the this is regarded as one of the uh, centers which actually gives the least factor of safety for based on the ordinary method of slices. So, here the free body diagram of the uh, ordinary method of uh, slice one of the 11th slice that means that this particular slice is elaborated here. So, you can see that here uh, both the lateral forces were not considered shear forces were not considered and only weight of slice is there that is actually acting downwards and this force is there that is actually acting in this direction this normal reaction which is actually shown here. So, this is the force triangle for the 11th slice which is which is exaggerated here. So, based on this uh, ordinary method of slices for the type of problem what we considered it is actually giving as 1.161 factor of safety. Similarly, by adopting for the same problem uh, Bishop's simplified method of slices uh, wherein uh, a similar procedure wherein we estimated the periodic surface and now you can see that uh, we have these uh, uh, normal forces shear forces are again considered to be 0. So, because of this difference is actually considered here 
So, this is the net force acting in this direction for the again the 11 slice and this is the soil shear resistance which is actually shown here and this is the weight of the slice. So, this is uh, this yields a factor safety of 1.289. So, when you look into the uh, you know for a given slope the Bishop simplified method uh, gives the higher factor safety and the John Booth method simplified method is uh, uh, giving a factor safety of 1.2. Uh, triple 2, wherein uh, here you can see that uh, the, this is uh, 40.3322 and 32.665, and wherein you actually have uh, uh, these uh, normal forces, normal forces, and then you actually have this uh, shear resistance which is actually uh, acting at the base of this slice. Now, uh, Morgenstern price method, uh, wherein uh, the uh, here we have considered the horizontal uh, norm, uh, interslice forces that is uh, horizontal forces as well as the uh, you know the uh, horizontal the shear, shear stresses on the along the uh, slice surfaces as well as the normal forces. So, because of this uh, force this diagram changes you can see that this is that uh, 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 net normal for uh, net tangential forces and these are the normal forces which are actually acting on slices and this is the weight of the slice and this is the normal reaction and this is this particular reaction. So, this yields a factor of safety. So, this when you compare the factor of safety is actually given by Lambert Whitman and as well as computed we can see that your Joe slope 2012 computes ordinary method of slices as 1.161 and Bishop's method computes 1.289 this is actually what obtained by using Joe slope 2012 and Lambert Whitman gives 1.17 and uh, uh, the same analysis uh, by for the Bishop simplified method it gives about 1.3. So, here in this uh, particular uh, slide uh, the factor safety of a slope can also be uh, obtained uh, by using uh, final, finite element based methods uh, or finite difference uh, programs like FLAC. So, here REL 2003 uh, uh, compared uh, the limit equilibrium methods of comparison like Bishop simplified method and John Booth method and Morgenstern price method and uh, whereas he compared the uh, method by using finite element method that is by using plaxis. So, wherein they adopted the shear strength reduction method and here both the base soil and uh, soil in the embankment zone are found to have different soil properties and uh, you can see that uh, the finite element based uh, method uh, by using plaxis uh, 2D gives say uh, the band of uh, the way the uh, failure potential failure can actually uh, failure surface can exist and it yields a factor of safety about 1.654. So, this is actually a particular uh, uh, this thing failure surface which is actually obtained for Bishop's method and John Booth's method and Morgenstern price method. So, you can see that the because of the consideration of these interslice forces the higher the factor of safety that indicates that uh, more uh, you can say that. Uh, uh, the slope is uh, so we can actually go uh, uh, adopt a steeper uh, sloping correlation. Suppose let us say that we we compute by using ordinary method of slices, uh, you know, 1.1 factor of safety. But however, uh, by considering that we tend to revise the slope and making it steeper, that leads to uh, you know a steeper uh, adoption of uh, a flatter sloping correlation. In such situations, so the adoption of an appropriate method help us to. Uh, arrive at computation of the uh, factor of safeties properly. So, in this particular lecture what we try to discuss is that slope stability analysis method different types of slope stability analysis methods were introduced and then we try to cover some typical examples uh, by using uh, uh, ordinary method of slices and failures or Swedish method of slices and Bishop simplified solution and we compared uh, uh, the uh, uh, typical cross section example which is given by Lambert and Whitman 1969 by analyzing with uh, uh, limit equilibrium based method uh, for uh, determining factor of safety by using Bishop's method, John Booth's method and uh, the values are found to be in uh, tandem. And uh, then finally also we discussed uh, uh, the illustrations which are given by results re reported for uh, given by REL 2013, 2003. Ariel 2003.